The symbiotes colloquial, plantar, are a fictional species of inorganic, amorphous, multicellular, extraterrestrial symbiotes appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. The symbiotes bond with their hosts, creating a symbiotic bond through which a single entity is created. They also are able to slightly alter their hosts' personalities, by influencing their darkest desires and wants, along with amplifying their physical and emotional traits and personality, granting them superhuman abilities. The symbiotes have also appeared in other media. The Venom symbiote appears in Spider-Man 3 and Venom, along with other symbiotes. A version of All Black the Necrosword also appears in Thor Ragnarok, part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Topic: Publication history. The first appearances of a symbiote occurs in the Amazing Spider-Man number 252, the Spectacular Spider-Man number 90, and Marvel Team-Up number 141, released concurrently in May 1984, in which Spider-Man brings one home to Earth after the Secret Wars, Secret Wars number 8, which was released months later, details his first encounter with it. The concept was created by a Marvel Comics reader, with the publisher purchasing the idea for $220. The original design was then modified by Mike Zeck, becoming the Venom symbiote. The concept would be explored and used throughout multiple storylines, spin-off comics, and derivative projects. Topic: <laughs> Fictional history. Symbiotes were originally created by an ancient malevolent primordial deity named Null. When the Celestials began their vast plan to evolve the universe, Null, seeing that his kingdom was being touched, retaliated by constructing All Black, the first symbiote, and decapitated a Celestial. Then, the other Celestials banished Null along with the severed Celestial head deeper in the void. After that, he started using the head with its cosmic energies as a forge for the symbiotes, where they got the weaknesses of sound and fire, the head would later become nowhere. He then went embarking on a genocide against the other gods. When battling the other gods he, crashes on a desolate planet where all black left him and went to Gore, since Gore was full with hate and tried to kill the other god and Null. Null then reawakens and created an army of symbiotes that he used to conquer planets and devour entire civilizations, establishing in the process the Symbiote Imperium. However, when a dragon-like composite went to the medieval Earth, Thor defeated it and destroyed the connection between Null and the symbiotes. Upon Null's severed connection to the symbiotes, the symbiote hive mind began to explore notions of honor and nobility as they bonded to benevolent hosts. The symbiotes subsequently rebelled against their god, imprisoning him at the heart of an artificial planet in the Andromeda galaxy they called Klintar, which is their word for cage. Ashamed of their dark past, the symbiotes of Klintar desired to spread and maintain peace throughout the cosmos by seeking out worthy hosts from various species in order to create an organization of noble warriors. However, these altruistic goals were imperfect, as the Klintar symbiotes could be corrupted by hosts with harmful chemical imbalances or problematic personality attributes, turning them into destructive parasites who would spread lies and disinformation about their own kind in order to make other people's fear and hate the symbiote species as a whole. The corrupted Klintar became more widespread than their benevolent counterparts, establishing a spacefaring culture dedicated to infecting and overtaking whole planets and re establishing the Imperium. The corrupted symbiotes forced their hosts to perform death-defying feats in order to feed off of the resulting surges of hormones like adrenaline and phenethylamine. These host beings would die quickly, either because of the wear from constant stress and exertion or as a result of the inherent danger in the stunts performed. At some point, a symbiote-run planet was devoured by Galactus. Due to their genetic memory, all symbiotes now loathe both Galactus and his former herald, the Silver Surfer. ZZZXX, a symbiote with a predilection for eating brains, was also captured by the Shi'ar, and imprisoned and studied for years until it was released and employed as a Praetorian guard by Gabriel Summers. 
The corrupted symbiotes had also invaded the Microverse and tried to absorb the Enigma Force, but they were defeated by the Avatar of the Force, after they had caused destructive effects on this world and its people. During the Kree Skrull War, the Kree wanting to replicate the Skrull's shapeshifting abilities, they got a newborn symbiote which had been outcast from the other symbiotes, on the planet where Null had created the symbiotes. They recruited Telkar to be bonded to the young symbiote and modified both Telkar and the symbiote so he could have full control over it. He infiltrated into the Skrulls using the symbiote's shapeshifting ability, but got discovered. He deleted the symbiote's memories and separated himself from it. The symbiote then reunited with the parasitic symbiotes, while retaining little memory of its first host. When the corrupted symbiotes found out that this symbiote wanted to commit to its host rather than use it up, they called it insane and trapped it in a canister to be condemned to die on a planet that would later become part of Beyonder's Battleworld where Spider-Man freed the symbiote and bonded with it. Spider-Man returned to Earth with the symbiote, where it later bonded with Eddie Brock in a church calling themselves Venom. During this time, it spawned seven children and a clone, its first child later having three of its own. The Venom symbiote gradually grew more and more monstrous and psychotic, that Eddie at some point separated himself from the symbiote causing it to release a telepathic scream, making the other corrupted symbiotes to come to invade the Earth. Then Eddie, Spider-Man and Scarlet Spider teamed up to fight the invasion and in the end, Eddie rebonded to Venom and released another powerful scream that made the symbiotes commit suicide. When bonded to Flash Thompson as part of Project Rebirth, who originally struggled to control it, the symbiote developed some slight affection for him. It is later established that the host's mental state affects the symbiote just as much as the other way around. As Venom's first child, the Carnage symbiote is as psychotic as its host Cletus Cassidy, and the Venom suit's explosiveness got worse after bonding with Angelo Fortunato and Mac Gargan after Brock, both of which were career criminals. Likewise, the various symbiotes bonded to heroes are not shown to be as twisted, though they occasionally struggle with aggression. A swarm of brood that had been overtaken by symbiotes later invade the SWORD satellite and possess all of its inhabitants including Deathbird with her unborn child in order to expand the symbiote Imperium, but Spider-Man, who got bonded to a second symbiote and his class from Jean Grey's school defeats the symbiotes. The Klintar were later raided by the poisons with help from Hayes Mansa, a symbiote poacher, resulting in the apparent death of the agents of the cosmos and the abduction of all the symbiotes. The abducted symbiotes were later modified by the poisons so they could use on the superheroes on Earth in order for the poisons to consume. After the defeat of the poisons, the surviving symbiotes were returned to Klintar, when the body of Grendel, the dragon-like composite symbiote defeated by Thor, is discovered on Earth. This reawakens Null enough to allow him to control the creature before being stopped by the combined efforts of Venom and Spider-Man and later incinerated by Eddie denying Null the chance to escape Klintar. After some months, a cult got hold of Cletus's damaged body, after being free from the poison shell and falling through the atmosphere, inside a chamber and had planned to revive him by using the Grendel's remnants which they stole from Maker. This cult, who worships Null and Carnage as Null's prophet, was led by Scorn. They implanted the remnants inside Cletus reviving him and at first he resembled ancient Venom Venom possessed by Null, until the Carnage pieces absorbed the ancient symbiote and got Scorn's remnants by killing her. When Cletus came in contact with Null, he got a new purpose and that was to free Null and the only way left was to get every single codex, the symbiote remnants containing the genetic information of the host, left inside the bodies of every single host, dead or alive who came in physical contact with the symbiotes on Earth in order to overload the symbiote hive mind and scatter the Klintar. Powers and abilities Symbiotes empower a host's natural abilities to the point where they far exceed that of normal members of the host species. These abilities include the following Superhuman strength strong enough to lift 50 tons or more, speed, endurance, agility, healing factor, and intelligence. 
Genetic memory, recalling information from previous hosts. They also leave traces of themselves, dubbed codecs, in the bodies of their hosts attached to the host's DNA, in order to send information to the hive mind. The ability to negate damage caused by terminal illnesses and permanent injuries. While symbiotes can somewhat heal their hosts, they generally seek to force their hosts to depend on them and thus ensure the symbiote's survival. For example, Eddie Brock was able to survive indefinitely with terminal cancer, and Scott Washington was able to walk despite being paraplegic. Similarly, Flash Thompson and Cletus Cassidy had received legs when bonded with the Venom symbiote and Carnage symbiote when they lost their legs. Can reproduce asexually with a limited number of seeds inside their mass. Such as Venom, which gave birth to seven children while its first child Carnage had three. Sensors that extend over its entire surface, enabling hosts to see what is behind or otherwise not in their line of sight like a spider sense. Able to change shape and size at will. This ability functions regardless of the host's actual stature and bodily dimensions, as the symbiotes are living tesseracts. This includes expanding to any size as long as they have something to grow on, such as a host or an object. Symbiotes can also get inside of small areas, such as electric wires and the insides of cars to completely disable them. This shapeshifting allows the symbiote to change its color and texture to allow it to blend into the environment as a form of camouflage or change the host's outward appearance including mimicking clothes and the appearances of other beings. Able to sense the thoughts and will of the host. When Spider-Man was originally selected, he had been thinking about Spider-Woman's costume in The Secret Wars. The symbiote acted on this and formed a similar costume to hers and Null's emblem, which is the one seen on Spider-Man and Venom. Venom and all its descendants possess the ability to bypass Spider-Man's spider sense, because the original symbiote was attached to Peter Parker Spider-Man first, it took his genetic information and spider powers. This means that the symbiote attacking Peter would essentially be Peter attacking himself, which wouldn't set off his spider sense during the Clone Saga. This became complicated, as Venom did set off Ben Riley's spider sense, however, this has been attributed to Ben being cloned from Peter prior to his first encounter with the Venom symbiote. Can excrete matter that enters in its body like bullets, turning those into the green saliva. Possess longevity as shown with Venom 2099 which was still alive in the year 2099 and All Black which was created in the beginning of the universe and was still alive in King Thor's timeline. Can merge with other symbiotes or straight up absorb one another. Similarly as Hybrid was formed or when Carnage absorbed another symbiote from the negative zone, regenerating itself. The symbiote can also absorb the codexes of other symbiotes, getting their genetic memory such as when Spider-Man bonded to two other symbiotes and they absorbed the Venom's codex, looking exactly like Venom. There are also additional powers that have been demonstrated, but are not necessarily universal to all symbiotes. Block part of the host's mind. Form fangs or simple bladed weapons out of their limbs. The first appearance of this was the Carnage symbiote. Form tendrils and tentacles of various lengths from their body. Form wings, as shown when Venom came in contact with Null and grew a pair of web-like wings, even though in some cases the symbiote did form gliding wings as shown with Venom Punisher and Hybrid. The purified Klintar possess cosmic awareness. Project the surface of the symbiote to attack at a distance can sustain its humanoid body even without a host, but for a period of time. Stick to walls adapted from Spider-Man. Produce acid, toxins, and venoms, such as in the venomous bite Venom delivered to Sandman shown with Venom, Agony and Venom 2099. Produce webbing from its own mass and adapted from Spider-Man. Sense the presence of other beings within a certain distance. Protect hosts from Ghost Rider's penance stare and the Inheritors' absorption touch. Create storage portals inside of them this allowed Peter Parker to stow and access his camera. 
Filter breathable air for its host, allowing them to breathe underwater seen in Vengeance of Venom, inhale poisonous fumes, and even survive in the vacuum of space. Transfer symbiote traits to its host, such as when Carnage ate Carl Malice and then he became a symbiote-human hybrid. The Venom symbiote also has empathic abilities, and is able to project desires and needs into the thoughts of its host or potential hosts. This ability can also aid Venom in detecting the truth from those he interrogates. In some realities, the symbiote feeds on the baser emotions of its host, creating an increasingly hostile personality. The longer the host is exposed to the symbiote, the more overpowering this state of mind becomes. Each symbiote has its own abilities, such as Venom's venomous bite, Toxin's ability to change his shape and form into a Spider-Man-like build slim, but strong, and Venom-like build big and muscular, depending on its mood, Scream can use its web-like hair as a weapon, Agony can spit acid and manipulate matter, Phage creates bladed weapons, Lasher uses tendrils on its back, Riot is particular to bludgeoning weapons and agility, Payback can produce electricity, Scorn can fuse itself with technology, All Black can grant its host immortality and Sleeper possesses chemokinesis, the ability to manipulate chemicals, providing limited telepathy and excelled cloaking abilities through pheromones. Some symbiotes have shown to be immune to sonic and fire through modification as shown with Anti-Venom, Red Goblin, Mayhem, Payback and Grendel. It can change the mood of its host by manipulating the brain chemicals. It can replicate itself as seen with Carnage and All Black in the mainstream universe and Venom in Spider-Man Reign. <laughs> Weaknesses Symbiotes have a natural weakness to sonic-based attacks and heat-based attacks, after Null unintentionally gave while forging them. However, symbiotes have a growing resistance to sound and fire. Still, there has not been an invulnerable symbiote in mainstream continuity, because the newest breeds can be harmed by incredible amounts of sonic waves and heat. Symbiotes like Crowbar are also seemingly vulnerable to light. The symbiotes in the Ultimate Marvel are only vulnerable to the heat produced by high-voltage electricity. Symbiotes have shown vulnerability to chemical and biological attacks, such as when Iron Man created a cure to a virus-like bio-weapon based on the Venom symbiote that was created by Doctor Doom. Venom and Carnage, have shown susceptibility to chemical inhibitors. Whether a symbiote can mutate and reduce the effect of these weaknesses is unknown. Potential hosts with advanced healing factors, such as Wolverine, have shown resistance to symbiosis. In some incarnations, the symbiote is depicted as requiring a certain chemical most likely phenethylamine to stay sane and healthy, which has been said to be found abundantly in two sources, chocolate and human brain tissue. Thus, the host is forced to either consume large amounts of chocolate or become a cannibal who devours the brains of those they kill. This peculiar trait has only been witnessed in the Venom symbiote. However, both Carnage and Toxin have threatened their enemies with aspirations to eating their brains, as well as various other body parts. When Toxin teamed up with Spider Man and Black Cat, he struggled to keep himself together, telling Spider Man that he was only joking about eating the robber's brains. Similarly, the Exolans feed on the immortal soul of the hosts, resulting in the hosts becoming immortal. However, descending their hosts into madness, as well making them forget all of their old memories, unless they inflict pain to themselves to keep their memories longer, as shown with Zack Dell and the Nameless. On at least one occasion, Spider-Man was able to exhaust the Venom symbiote by taking advantage of the fact that it made its webbing out of itself. After the symbiote had already used a great deal of webbing to bind him to a bell, Spider-Man forced Venom to use further webbing so that it would exhaust itself, like blood dripping from a wound, although the sheer amount of webbing that the symbiotes would need to use for this weakness to be exploited makes its use in a fight limited. The symbiotes are unable to bond to more than one host as shown when Venom tried to bond to both Eddie and Peter at the same time and again with Flash and Eddie, even though the Carnage symbiote didn't display this weakness when bonded to people in Doverton, Colorado. Another weakness that they have is their hunger for feelings. 
In the storyline Planet of the Symbiotes, Eddie Brock releases a cry of pain and agony so great that the entire symbiote race commits mass suicide. However, how they kill themselves is not clear. The Xenophages, a race of extraterrestrial shapeshifters which prey on symbiotes, possess the ability to spew an unknown incendiary chemical that can paralyze symbiotes and enhance their taste. Numerous occasions have shown that when a corrupted symbiote remains bonded to a host for too long, the symbiote will eventually consume the body of the host leaving the host a dead husk as shown with the soldiers who were bonded to the Grendel symbiotes and with Peter Parker in Two What If. When Eddie Brock was diagnosed with cancer, Martin Lee used his healing ability to cure Eddie from his cancer, accidentally making the white blood cells in Eddie's blood to combat the Venom symbiote remnants creating a new non-sentient symbiote called Anti-Venom. This symbiote had the ability to cure every sickness including Spider-Man's powers and it was also corrosive to the symbiotes as shown when Eddie and Flash nearly killed Venom, Mania, the Poisons and Red Goblin. There have been no symbiotes shown to be immune to anti-venom. A new and still mysteriously extraterrestrial race known as poisons, apparently nature's answer to the symbiotes, prey on them through direct contact infection, which forms an unstoppable one-sided union that the symbiote wants no part of. Topic: <laughs> List of symbiotes. Major symbiote characters The following symbiotes have appeared throughout several years of Spider-Man's history, appeared in multiple media such as film and video games and were main characters, villains in story arcs. Other symbiote characters The following symbiotes have made only a few other appearances in comic books and are usually excluded from adaptations in other media. Topic: Other versions. Topic: Ultimate Marvel. In the Ultimate Marvel Universe, the Venom suit is a man-made creation born of an experiment by Richard Parker and Edward Brock Sr. to develop a protoplasmic cure for cancer, while Bolivar Trask who was funding the research intended to weaponize it. It used Richard's DNA as the starting base for it, thus himself and Peter are «related» to it. When bonding to a host, the organic matter that comprises the suit envelops the host, regardless of resistance, temporarily blinding it, before encasing itself in a hard casing, similar to a pupa. When the host emerges, the suit then shifts its appearance and function to assist its host, such as creating eyes for it to see through, or tries to take it over, inducing a homicidal rage and attempting to feed itself if bonded with an incompatible host. When bonded with a host and forcibly removed, the suit leaves trace amounts of itself in the bloodstream, which attracts other samples of venom to itself, and can overload Peter's spider sense. In the video game Ultimate Spider-Man, absorbing the trace amounts in Peter's blood allowed Eddie to take complete control of the suit, gaining a greater ability to talk and a spider symbol on his chest. Venom's only known weakness is electricity, and larger amounts of the suit will need more electricity to kill, as varying amounts of the suit will be stunned or vaporized by electric shocks. This was first seen in Ultimate Spider-Man No. 38, when an electric wire got tangled around Venom's foot. An electrocution from live power lines vaporized the smaller amount on Peter, while a similar amount disabled Eddie. Note in the video game Ultimate Spider-Man, when Electro electrocutes Venom during a cutscene, the suit is not affected by the shock like the live power line did in the Venom arc. The suit can take the shocker's vibro shocks, and can protect its host from a bullet, who feels nothing more than a relaxing vibration. When worn by a host other than Richard's son Peter, the host is compelled to take the life energy of other human beings or else have their own be consumed by the suit instead. 
The original Spider-Man was able to control the suit to a greater extent than anyone because of his powers and because the suit was designed for his father. It is hinted in the Ultimate Spider-Man video game that the plane crash that killed Peter's parents was caused by Eddie Sr. wearing the suit as orchestrated by Bolivar Trask. The Carnage symbiote also appears in the Ultimate Universe as a parasite genetically engineered by Kurt Connors and Ben Riley from Peter's DNA based on Richard's research. Traces of the Venom suit remaining in Peter's blood give Carnage similar properties to those of the Venom suit. It also devours people, but does not require a host. When first introduced, the organism was a blob of instinct, with no intelligence or self-awareness, with its only aim to feed on the DNA of others, including Gwen Stacy, to stabilize itself. After feeding on multiple people, Carnage turns into a damaged form of Richard and Peter with the memories of itself as Spider-Man. Carnage tries to absorb Peter so it can become whole, but Peter throws Carnage into a smokestack, burning the beast. But it's revealed that the organism had survived and turned into a replica of Gwen's form with Gwen's memories. During an encounter with Eddie Brock, the Venom suit absorbs the Carnage suit into itself making itself complete and leaving Gwen a normal human being. <laughs> Spider-Gwen In Spider-Gwen's universe, Dr. Elsa Brock created a cure to Harry Osborne's lizard DNA by using Spider-Gwen's radioactive isotopes given to her by SILK. Leader Cindy Moon. When Gwen injected the isotopes in Harry, the lizard serum combined with the spider isotopes and transformed into Venom which bonded to Spider-Gwen giving her powers back and becoming Gwenom. This symbiote in natural form is actually some spiders working together and is weak to Sonic only when bonded to a host, otherwise is not affected by this weakness when without a host. <laughs> <laughs> Amalgam comics In the Amalgam Comics universe, the facility which created Spider-Boy, started experimenting on a substance which they got from an alien spaceship. Accidentally, they created a crystalline symbiote named Bizarnage amalgamation of Carnage and Bizarro. It had the powers of Spider-Boy and started attacking everyone until Spider-Boy defeated it. MC2. In the alternate universe of the Marvel Comics 2, or MC2 imprint, Norman Osborn got Eddie's blood, who was still bonded to Venom at the time, and extracted the symbiote codex from the blood. Then, Norman combined the codexes with May's DNA and created a symbiote, human hybrid clone of Mayday Parker. The clone stayed in stasis inside a chamber, until Peter with Norman's mind became Goblin God and awakens the hybrid. When Peter got back to normal, the hybrid under the alias of Mayhem, Spider-Girl went to live with the Parker's family, naming herself April Parker. In a later timeline, Mayhem accidentally kills the real Spider-Girl and became a murderous vigilante after killing American Dream. The government in an attempt to stop her, they used pieces of the dead Carnage symbiote after being killed by Mayday to create living weapons dubbed Bio-Predators. The bio-preds run wild, however, decimating the world and its defenders. Mayhem, seeing the error of her ways, goes back in time and sacrifices herself to stop her past self from killing Spider-Girl, ensuring the events that led to the bio-preds' creation never occurred, even though she may have survived. <laughs> Spider-Verse During the 2014, Spider-Verse storyline, in Spider-Punk's universe, VENOM, also known as Variable Engagement Neuro-Sensitive Organic Mesh is created by Oscorp and is worn by the Thunderbolt Department, the Police and Fire Department of President Osborne so he could have full control over the city, but they are all defeated by Spider-Punk using his guitar. Spider-Geddon During the 2018, 
Spider-Geddon storyline in the universe of Penny Parker aka SP Dr. Ven Hash M is a giant mech suit powered by a SIM engine created to serve as backup in case the SP Dr. failed It was piloted by Addy Brock until in a battle against a technological monster named MORBIUS the suit gained a conscience and went rogue Though SP Doctor was able to defeat Ven Hash M, she was too late to stop it from consuming Addy as well as her version of Aunt May, who flew in to fix the problem manually. Equals 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 what if? Equals equals equals. Topic. Spider Man had rejected the Spider. What if the other set during the other storyline features an alternative version of Peter who abandons the spider when given the choice some time afterward the venom symbiote leaves its current host Mac Gargan and merges with Peter who was inside a cocoon to become poison poison now calling himself i chooses Mary Jane to be his companion he fails to gain her affection and instead, he digs up the grave of Gwen Stacy. The last images reveals Poison watching over a new cocoon like his own, as it bursts forth showing a hand similar to Carnage's, even though the normal symbiotes are unable to bond with dead hosts. <laughs> Age of Apocalypse In a what if? Age of Apocalypse reality, in which both Charles Xavier and Eric Lenzher were killed, Apocalypse is served by clones of a symbiote Spider Man, although the clones seem to be more symbiote than man. <laughs> Spider Man, India In Spider-Man, India, the symbiotes are parasitic demons with outward tusk-like fangs, who had ruled the world in the past, but got trapped inside an amulet. The amulet was eventually found by Nalan Oberoi and transformed him into the Green Goblin. During a fight with Spider-Man, the Green Goblin releases a demon to possess Spider-Man, but is expelled. After the defeat of Green Goblin, the amulet is thrown into ocean, leaving Venom the only demon alive. Topic: What the? In the What the? The Bee Yonder gives Spider Ham a version of the black uniform, but Spider Ham loved his classic suit more, so he got rid of it. In number twenty, Pork Grind, a pig version of Venom is introduced as an enemy of Spider Ham. Topic: Contest of Champions. In the 2016 Contest of Champions series, where Maestro and Collector use the heroes of different worlds to battle with each other. After this version of Venom was killed by Punisher 2099, the remnants fused with the remains of the Void creating the symbioids. In other media Television Symbiotes appear in the 1990 Spider-Man animated series. Both Venom and Carnage appear. In the series, Venom is defeated by Spider-Man and sent into space. Dormammu brings Venom back to serve him. When Venom fails to get a portal device they bond Carnage to Cletus Cassidy and send him to help Venom. Venom betrays Dormammu and leaves. Carnage is sent to absorb life energy. Eddie Brock willingly separates from Venom. When Carnage kidnaps Ashley Kafka who Eddie is in love with Eddie rejoins with the symbiote and helps Spider-Man. When Carnage attempts to throw Kafka into limbo the place between portals Venom stops him and knocks them both into limbo. During the Spider Wars season finale, Carnage bonds with Spider-Man to create Spider-Carnage. In Spider-Man Unlimited, Venom and Carnage are primary villains. 
Venom appears in The Spectacular Spider-Man, with Spider-Man's version voiced by Josh Keaton, and Eddie Brock's version voiced by Benjamin Diskin. In the episode, The Uncertainly Principle, the symbiote arrives on Earth by stowing away on the space shuttle. After being rejected by Spider-Man, it bonds with Eddie in the episode, Intervention, and is ultimately defeated in the episode, Nature vs. Nurture. Venom reappeared in the season 2 episodes, First Steps, Growing Pains, and Identity Crisis, where he attempts to expose Spider-Man's secret identity but his plans are foiled. Carnage was also set to appear in the third season. The Venom, Carnage, and Anti-Venom symbiotes appear in Ultimate Spider-Man. Venom and Anti-Venom are created by Dr. Octopus. Venom was created by altering a sample of Spider-Man's DNA and Anti-Venom was created from the Venom sample used to counter and destroy the Venom symbiote. The Carnage symbiote is created by Green Goblin and later recreated by Michael Morbius from the Venom symbiote he obtained. In the Hulk and the Agents of SMASH episode, The Venom Within, Dr. Octopus creates Gamma Venom by having the Venom symbiote combine with each member of the Agents of SMASH. This version of the Venom symbiote is destroyed by the Agents of SMASH and Spider Man. The symbiotes appear in the animated Guardians of the Galaxy series that debuted in 2015. Their origins revealed in the three part Symbiote War, as originally Klintar, who were altered by Thanos in his experiments on the mining planet, later revealed to be what remained of Groot's homeworld. The Exolans are also referenced inhabiting Wraith's body. The Venom symbiote appeared in the animated Spider Man series that debuted in 2017. In this version, Horizon High Grandmaster Max Model acquires the symbiote from NASA's space program as a way to discover and add a new element to the periodic table. It first appeared in the episode, A Day in the Life, in which Black Cat steals it as a means to sell it to the black market, but Spider-Man recaptures it and takes it back to Horizon High. It later appears in episodes such as, Sandman, and Symbiotic Relationship. Topic Film Topic Sam Raimi Film Series The Venom symbiote appears in Spider Man 3, after it landed on Earth inside a meteorite. The symbiote fused with Peter Parker, Spider Man's suit enhancing his powers and abilities. After being discarded by Parker following the dark influence it had on him, the entity attaches to Eddie Brock played by Topher Grace. <laughs> Mark Webb films In trailers for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, the Venom symbiote appeared briefly among various elements of supervillain technology seen in the Gustav Fires, The Gentleman's Agency. In the final cut of the film the symbiote was replaced by the rhino's armor as Richard Parker has a strong connection with Oscorp's special projects equipment used by many Spider-Man villains. Sony Pictures had plans to create a Spider-Man cinematic universe with various spin-off films including a Venom film, but those plans were abandoned following the studio agreement reached with Marvel Studios. Marvel Cinematic Universe In Guardians of the Galaxy, the Exolans are referenced via the Exolan monks, who serve Ronan the Accuser. In Thor, Ragnarok, Hela uses a weapon called the Necrosword which is based on All Black the Necrosword. However, in the movie there is no mention that the weapon is a symbiote, because, similar to the Exolans, in its introduction All Black wasn't intended to be a symbiote before a retcon in the comics, hence why Marvel Studios has the rights of All Black. <laughs> Sony's Marvel Universe 
Following the success of reintroducing Spider-Man in film with Captain America, Civil War 2016 and the expected reception of Spider-Man, Homecoming 2017, Sony Pictures stated that they were moving forward with Venom, written by Scott Rosenberg and Jeff Pinkner, and directed by Ruben Fleischer, released on October 5, 2018, with Tom Hardy portraying Eddie Brock Venom. While initial reports stated that the film would be separate from the MCU, instead set within its own continuity entitled Sony's Marvel Universe, with no connections to the Spider-Man character, in June 2017, Amy Pascal revealed in an interview that the film would have connections to Spider-Man, Homecoming and the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe as an adjunct. Film, with Tom Holland possibly reprising his role as Spider-Man in Venom as well as future spin-off films. In the international teaser trailer, the Venom symbiote was seen in a glass capsule, before Venom himself is revealed at the end of the first trailer. Riot appeared as the film's main antagonist, played by Riz Ahmed. <laughs> <laughs> Video games. In the arcade title Spider-Man, the video game after the defeat of Doctor Doom, the final boss fight consists of a battle against an infinite number of Doom-created symbiote clones. All the clones can be killed, but there is one prime clone with much more life. Defeating this clone is the only way to win. In the N64, PlayStation title Spider-Man, the symbiotes become the more common enemy after the player rescues Mary Jane and heads back to the Daily Bugle. The fastest way to kill these symbiotes is to find a fire-imbued web cartridge. It is revealed that Dr. Octopus and Carnage plan to unleash the symbiotes on all of humanity and rule a new world order. The symbiote family are major characters in the video game Venom – Spider-Man – Separation Anxiety. Venom appears as the final boss in Spider-Man – The Animated Series. Venom appears in the Ultimate Spider-Man video game for Game Boy Advance as a playable character. Carnage appears too, but as a boss, Venom also appears as a boss a few times when playing as Spider-Man. Venom is a playable character in Marvel Nemesis, Rise of the Imperfects. In the Spider-Man 3 video game, Shriek appears. Shriek's powers come from a symbiote in this game which is also black in color. However, the symbiote only covers half of her body. This is only found on the Wii, PS2 versions of the game. In Spider-Man, Web of Shadows, Venom returns to New York. During a fight with Venom, the symbiote suddenly reproduces and the spawn bonds with Spider-Man creating a replica of the black suit, but with considerably more carnage-like abilities such as projecting bladed tentacles. Over the course of the game, Venom creates symbiote seed pods in various locations around the city which absorb passing civilians and infect them with various types of symbiote ranging from snatcher symbiotes the small black symbiotes that drag unsuspecting victims to the seed pods zombie symbiotes the weak white symbiotes berserker symbiotes the red shiny symbiotes grappler symbiotes black and red versions of the berserkers and slasher symbiotes the white and pink symbiotes the symbiotes even manage to infect Electro, Vulture, Black Cat and Wolverine. Symbiote Electro and Symbiote Vulture go on to spawn other symbiotes with powers similar to their hosts resulting in Electrolings and Vulturelings. All are eventually defeated by Spider-Man and the symbiotes are separated from them. In Spider-Man, Shattered Dimensions, the ultimate Marvel version of Spider-Man in his symbiote suit is a playable character. Madam Web had restored the black suit as it provides this world's Peter Parker with additional abilities that he will require to succeed in his mission, while she uses her psychic abilities to prevent the suit attempting to take over his mind. However, Madam Web's abilities do not seem to be absolute, as Ultimate Spider-Man experiences occasional bouts of anger. Also, the Ultimate version of Carnage appears as the final boss in the Ultimate levels where it was granted the ability to reanimate its victims into symbiotic zombie-like creatures thanks to the powers of a fragment of the Tablet of Order and Chaos when S.H.I.E.L.D. are foolishly mixing the fragment with Carnage. 
In Spider-Man, Edge of Time, it is revealed that the brainwashed anti-venom is responsible for killing present-day Spider-Man, altering the future of the Marvel 2099 timeline and prompting Spider-Man 2099 to tamper with the timeline further in order to save his predecessor's life and repair the timestream. In one of their battles, Anti-Venom, Dr. Octopus who in the new timeline was never a villain, but still uses his trademark arms and game-exclusive villain drive. Walker Sloan the man from 2099 who tried to alter the timeline are knocked into a portal and become atrocity vocal effects provided by Fred Tatashiori, a bloated version of Anti-Venom with tentacles. Both Atrocity and the future Peter Parker are defeated with the time resetting presumably separating Atrocity back into Walker Sloan, Anti-Venom, and Dr. Octopus. Two versions of the black suit appear as an optional costume in the Amazing Spider-Man video game, based on its appearance in the Spider-Man 3 film, and a modified version of Spider-Man's costume from the Amazing Spider-Man film. Backstory for the game also reveals that the game version of the symbiote is based on a black goo recovered from space and that it is bonded with the game's version of the scorpion. This is an allusion to the comics, where Mac Gargan briefly assumed the role of Venom. Symbiote scientists appear in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. Various symbiote characters are featured in the mobile game Spider-Man Unlimited with the symbiote world featured as a level. Various symbiotes appear in the Facebook game Marvel, Avengers Alliance, Venom, Agent Venom, Anti-Venom, Scream and Hybrid. Symbiotes connect together in a Marvel Puzzle Quest storyline. Besides Mac Gargan and Eddie Brock as Venom and Cletus Cassidy's Carnage, there are four new symbiotes, a green male named Carrier, an orange female named Horror, a teal teethy creature named Demolisher, and a magenta dog-like creature named Mutation. In Marvel Avengers Academy, the symbiotes appears which were taken from their home planet by Oscorp. Spider-Man tried to save the symbiotes, but got bonded to them and then they tried to take over the Academy. They failed, but decided to remain on Earth. The symbiotes appears in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. In the game's story, Jeddah Doma uses the Soul Stone to steal a million souls from Earth and feed them to a giant symbiote, planning to strengthen it and use it as a weapon against Ultron Sigma. He gives pieces of the symbiotes to A.I.M. Brella to bond the pieces to virus-infected subjects to stabilize them. In a battle against Jeddah the heroes are successful, but then he unleashes the creature on the new Metro City. When Chris Redfield tries attacking it, he accidentally causes part of the symbiote to bond to Spider-Man, forcing the latter to fight against Frank West and Mike Hager against his will though the symbiote is removed after Frank causes some car alarms to go off. The creature is unleashed on new Metro City, but is destroyed by the heroes using three of the Infinity Stones. Venom also appears as a playable character via downloadable content. In Spider-Man, during a conversation between Spider-Man and Yuri Watanabe, she quickly asks Spider-Man as a joke if he has a black and white suit indicating that Spider-Man at some point had a black suit but he got rid of it. In the post credit scene Norman Osborn goes into a secret lab inside his house where it shows his son Harry Osborn, inside a chamber labeled G35 with black web-like substance attached to his body. When Spider-Man looks through certain windows there is a few collectibles on a shelf, including a black suit Spider-Man figure. In the 2014 fighting video game Marvel, Contest of Champions, the symbioids are symbiotes merged with the adaptioids. Venom, Carnage and Agent Venom appear as a playable characters. Also featured are also Venompool amalgamation of Deadpool and Venom, Venom the Duck amalgamation of Howard the Duck and Venom and Symbiote Supreme amalgamation of Doctor Strange and Venom. Topic: <laughs> Attractions Scream appears as one of the villains in Universal Orlando's Islands of Adventure The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man Ride. 